Wait, are, are you copying me or, or am I copying you? Like, wait, what? You want me? You want me? You want you? Me, you? No, him? Okay, okay. We're, we're all playing apparently the same game when it comes to copycat gate. Grandmaster Sergei Karyakin and Grandmaster Alexei Shirov took this position from the white side and round eight at the FeedHS.com Grand Swiss. And boy, did we have controversy a mess. Quite hilariously, the players both actually maybe forgot their preparation. Uh, one of the things that I was super confused about, full disclosure, and I was super validated when Sergey Karyakin took to social media after the game, was that in analyzing it myself, I was convinced that the move played here, G4, was actually a blunder. And it was, and I'm going to show you how. Sergey Karyakin actually tweeted, funny accident today, we had the same position, and I actually forgot my preparation. He forgot his own game against Yu Young Yi, which was from Baku in 2015. I, I was looking at all of these variations and was really funny to see this tweet afterwards because it was exactly the same conclusion I was drawing that, funnily enough, whoever was copying who was making a mistake on all sides no matter what. Now, you can see all the analysis over at my blog. This is a very complicated variation of the Sicilian, kind of topical. I can't tell whether white is about to refute this line or if black is holding on. But what I do know is that the move G4 that was played, while it is a novelty, and I gave it as such, is a bad move. It's a blunder. Um, and uh, moves that have been played before, things like rook d1 are okay. Things like rook to g1 are okay. Uh, things like king to d1 was played by Aryan Tari recently. So there's, there's all kinds of other moves to play here. But the move that was played in the game, G4, is no good. The problem is that when you're following Sergei Karyakin and you think he's pretty good in this line, maybe you just keep following him if you're Alexei Shirov. So Alexei Shirov plays G4. Now C5 is played. This is exactly the principled move you do in this structure, and Black does it many times, even at the cost of the pawn to open the bishop, because we're playing against the king. And so both sides play Rook G1. Again, this is Sergei Karyakin versus Alexei Dreyev. We also have Alexei Shirov versus Yu Yongi playing the same exact game here. Knight e4 was played by both, a very good move, putting a knight in the center and defending the pawn. Now this position says black should be good here, right? In all these, in all the other games in this line, if black gets c5, he at least loses the pawn. Um, and if white doesn't have an answer to this open bishop and central control, white gets in big trouble with the king here. That's what my analysis was telling me. That's what I thought was going to happen. And then after the move queen e5, the truth is, all of that could have come true if Black had just found the move Castles. Castles, and okay, there's, all, again, all kinds of variations that you can check out on the blog. The main one I'm going to show is, is a very uh, important theme. That if White plays the same move you did in the game, Black can just sacrifice the E6 pawn with check. And here comes Rook E8, and White can't stop it. There, there's actually no way to deal with it. The best variations are things like bishop takes e4, but now black can switch to rook f6, which wins the queen. And in a position like this, black is uh, borderline winning already because it's not just that you have an unbalance of queen versus rook and bishop, but this white king is a, is a terrible, terrible target. So castles, if it was played by either Yu Yang Yi or Alexei Dreyev, would have improved on the other. But one of them played queen h4. I don't even remember who played it first. It's a double question mark move as far as I'm concerned because it was played twice by both players and both times it was a blunder. Uh, now white can play bishop g2 and just like that, the move queen h4 turns an evaluation probably plus two for black to plus one for white. So a huge swing, white plays bishop g2. At this moment, they separated the players in the playing hall and they moved them. And finally, we had differentiation with one of them taking the right move here as white and one of them taking the wrong move. Sergei Karyakin played the move king d3, which was correct. Quickly, I'm going to show you why bishop f3, chosen by Alexei Sheriff, was not as good. The main difference is that either way, we're going to get an obstacle bishop position. But here, uh, Yu Young Yi was able to give up the knight and then eventually castle long, which was the key. When the king gets out of the center, we're no longer dealing with mating attacks, dark square problems, problems on g7, all the things that Alexei Dreyev had to deal with against Sergei Karyakin that I'm going to show you. So this is what was really going on. This is the level of detail that, unfortunately, the commentary team isn't always able to go into. They're doing an amazing job. But this is why I justified a missed on the island video, because even though this was definitely covered on the aisle, uh, there was so much to it. I, ha I had to bring more. And uh, I honestly kind of got sucked down the rabbit hole of copycat gape like everybody else. What was really going on here, especially because they were playing bad moves while copying each other, right? It's just absolutely a chess comedy, if you will. So Bishop F3 was played now that the players were separate by Alexei Shirov. King D3 was played 
by Sir Guy Kardashian, and this is much better. The biggest difference is that now the same idea occurs, because this knight is this knight is being lost if you don't move it with check. I'm just winning it. If you move it anywhere else, I win the bishop. So that's why these ideas of knight f2 and knight c3 are forced. The difference is that now after trades and takes g2, white takes c5, and black could castle long here, but white would have king c2, where there's no checks by the queen, and then eventually winning the a7 pawn is going to be more than enough for white to not only be up a ton of material, but actually still gets an attack, because the pieces are different. The bishop on g2 is much harder to defend here for Alexei Dreyev than what happened in the in the Shirov Yu Young E version. So instead of that, after bishop takes c5, rook c8 was played, uh, Dreyev was trying to get an attack, he knew he couldn't castle long, but now on rook a1, king f7, and the move rook e2, we see the real problem. Uh, after things like queen f3 check, bishop e3, d6, and queen d4, the real issue is your bishop is trapped because you thought it was only pinned before when your queen was on the file, but your bishop is actually pinned to something else, which is the g7 pawn. So in this position, you couldn't even play bishop h3 without queen takes g7 and checkmate to follow. Because of that, black basically had to go all in, starts desperately throwing pieces and sacrificing things on g2 and c4 and all kinds of stuff lead to crazy checks, but Karyakin plays bishop d4, blocking the check, unleashing the discovery on the king and the e5 pawn, and uh, of course white is completely winning. So there's the story. Without going into all the details again that you can see at the blog in terms of this opening line, I'm sure I didn't answer the question. These guys are much better than me, but I was just fascinated by what really is the theoretical answer here. I don't even know that I found it, but it is instructive if you're a Taimano Sicilian player or one of the more advanced players, check it out. And... Um, Again, don't just copy your opponent. Turns out Queen H4 was a blunder played twice by Black, and both times uh, just uh, they missed their opportunity to maybe punish what was bad preparation or memory of preparation by Sergei Karyakin as he tweeted himself. So if you're watching this on the broadcast, thank you for tuning in, and I hope you keep enjoying the show. And if you're not watching this on the broadcast, go do it. Go over to chess.com TV and check it out. Uh, we want to find out who's going to challenge in the candidates for an opportunity to play Magnus Carlsen. Anna Rudolph and Danny King are rocking it over there. So thank you so much for tuning in. Sorry for that camera jump right there, and I'll see you around on chess.com.